today we're gonna paint this lint chocolate bunny. I think it will be quite a challenge because it's chocolate and chocolate is brown and brown out of the tube is very transparent overall. So let's have a look how we can approach this. Well, I have here two brown colors. I've got burnt chenna. If you look here, you see a little square with a stripe through it, means it's transparent. Same thing here, transparent oxide red, fully transparent. If we then take as comparison the pearl red, you see that it's half opaque. So it's got more coverage to it. And if we combine that with some ivory black, which has a full coverage, full opacity, we get a more thick layer of paint, which isn't transparent or see-through. Same with yellow ochre in the mixture, good coverage. What is on the palette? We have some burnt chenna, some raw umber, uh, ivory black, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, pearl red, yellow ochre, and white. There was a lot of white here, but a lot of that white went into this, this mixture together with alizarin crimson to create the background color. Very nice pink. For the chocolate, for the bunny itself, we have this range of colors. And these are all mixtures between pearl red and a tiny pinch of ivory black. They make for very nice dark browns. And the more red you add, the lighter it gets. And for the lightest parts, I also use some yellow ochre in the mixture as well. Now, why don't I just use burnt chenna from the tube? That I will show you in just a bit because this is a very transparent color. But parole red is slightly covering and ivory black too. As you see, it's very transparent. You can easily see that background color, but it's very warm as well. So as a first layer, it's gorgeous. With that warmth glowing through, burnt chenna is your go-to paint. Now let's have a look at one of my darkest colors on my palette here, which is that mixture between pearl red and ivory black. So as you can see, that's a nice, warm, dark color, which seems to get the trick done with these dark shadow parts. I do like that when you light is very thin. Also get a bit of that um, reflected light effect in there, as you can see. Without the need of putting too much effort in there. That's where the yellow ochre kicks in. This is always my go-to brush, a flat one. Because you can get nice straight lines, a bit messy, nice and loose. If you want to paint loose, my advice is get a brush that doesn't always do what you want to do. to 
laying some more of those shadows. Because after all, an object is not more than shadows and light. Objects just as shadow and light. detail, just indications of texture. contrast to make the honey appear more smooth so it is chocolate actually by brushing away a bit of paint you get lighter colors as well that's also how you can play with your paint. Let's try that here. I also like to use a Q-tip to gently rub away some paint. 